Earlier this year, New York Magazine writer at large, Rebecca Traster, wrote this big cover story about the emerging politics of abortion after the Supreme Court's decision to strike down Roe v. Wade. At the time, there was still some debate around her hypothesis that abortion wins elections for Democrats who were entering, quote, a new era of political possibility. But now, particularly after the wins for abortion rights that we saw this week, it's clear Rebecca Traster was correct. And I think both parties understand that. Joining me now is Rebecca Traster. It's great to have you on the program. It's always nice to uh, write something and then have it borne out by subsequent events. Did you anticipate that things would be as, at least as of now, unequivocal politically as they have proven to be so far? No. In fact, um, you know, I was nervous about the blunt force of the headline of that story, which was simply abortion wins elections, because, of course, I understand as a as a voter, as a political writer, as somebody who's looked at this history, that that very rarely is there anything that is quite so unequivocal. And that headline really was a blunt force headline. Um, and of course, you never know actually what's going to happen in any given election. Um, but here we are. <laughs> Uh, there have been these seven referendum votes, in addition to Supreme Court votes in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania that have relied on abortion. There's been the vote in Ohio about whether one could vote in the referendum on Tuesday. There have been all these elections. And yes, in every case over the past year, over the in the months since I published that story, and in fact since Dobbs, in almost every contest, abortion has won. But I have to say that I... I think that that blunt force headline was necessary to get through to a Democratic Party that over decades hasn't always felt comfortable running on abortion rights, has treated it as a, a difficult and controversial issue rather than a very popular issue, which is one of its strengths. And so that blunt force headline, abortion wins elections, was meant to get in the head of Democrats. And as you pointed out earlier, now we have all this evidence, and it is very much in the head of Democrats and Republicans. Republicans. And you detailed some of the challenges ahead for Republicans. How do they, the, the you broke it, you bought it problem for Republicans, which is they got what they wanted, which is the overturn of Roe, and now they are paying for it in these steady electoral losses, and what are they going to do? On the other side of that is the question of what Democrats are going to do, because maybe the bluntness of that equation is getting through. But I think especially going into the 2024 elections, one of the things they have to think about is, OK, so abortion may win elections, but you actually have to think about why it's winning. You can't just say the word abortion. It, it took a long time for a lot of Democratic politicians to even be able to utter the word abortion. Um, and now they're going to get better at that. But you can't just say the word over and over and over again without thinking, what is it here that is driving voters to the polls in this sort of like undeniable surge of Democratic support? What are voters responding to here and really think that through in terms of how they communicate moving into this next year and, in fact, into the years that are to come? Yeah, and I think that's that's a really good point. I think what, what part of what's so interesting, particularly if, if you look at Ohio, for instance, I mean, it's it's very tangible and concrete. I mean, it, you know, it, it's not sometimes things in politics are very attenuated. You know, you're voting for this person and you hope when you put mm -hmm. them in, they'll vote the way you want and then maybe they'll pass the tax code or whatever. This is like it's it, 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 are you going to be able to get an abortion in Ohio or not? Like, that's very clear. The, the, the question on the federal level, which I think is, you know, to, to, to play this out, the Republicans are clearly, they have no idea what to do. And they're, they're fighting about national blame. But it does seem to me like the clear message here is, for the Democrats at the federal level in a presidential election is, we will vote to protect abortion nationwide. They say codify a row, which I think is a sort of not a great phrase. I think we should come up with something else. But that seems to me like the clear message here is, we will protect abortion rights nationwide. Right. And I think that has to be there. There has to be an exchange. As you point out, these referenda have put voters closer to actual policymaking than than we get to be in a lot of the in, in a lot of electoral instances. Right. And that you go and you know that your vote counts toward protecting a right to access health care. Right. That is an incredible power, incredibly yeah. powerful and motivating feeling. And your point as to what has to happen on the federal level and the argument and the deal that that politicians have to put out there for the voters who they want to come vote for them a year from now is your vote is again going to matter when it comes to the reinstatement or protection. And and part of what my story was about in March is that 
there's not a history of politicians being able to do this legislatively. The Supreme Court decision in Roe in 1973 came at just the moment that there was even the beginning of discussion about a federal legislative project to protect and decriminalize abortion. And so Democratic politicians on a federal level have a lot of work to do right mm. now to think about how they're going to make this policy. That's, a, that's such an important point and a key point in how you're going to message and then deliver, you know, if you win uh, uh, in, in this run up to the election, how you make this, you know, because it's going to be central in this election. And if you, you know, you, you, you can't just talk about it. You got you to gotta have a plan for people. Rebecca Traster, uh, whose piece is worth going back to if you have not yet read it. Um, always great to have you on. Thank you very much.